everything inside me. Rene Descartes writes, If you would be a real seeker of truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt, as far as possible, all things. An iconoclast is, an individual who personifies a rebellious, contrarian, and oppositional spirit. They would rather reduce the world to a tabula rasa than become any kind of idologue. More existential than teleological, more syncretistic than monistic, more unorthodox than orthodox, iconoclasts are icons of mutability, able to adapt and overcome, rather than succumb to the rigid tendencies of the human condition. The following are signs if you are an iconoclast. 1. You are rebellious in spirit. Albert Camus said. I rebel, therefore, we exist. As an iconoclast, you are not a rebel without a cause, but a rebel with a cause. Your cause is to always be in search of a better way of being human in the world. Which means you are almost always in opposition to existing ways. Especially ways that kowtow to facile authority and claim to be unquestioningly true. As such, you do not succumb to peer pressure. Just because everybody is doing it, has never been a good reason to do it. You understand that the human condition is fallible, imperfect, and prone to be mistaken. Especially when it comes to beliefs. Therefore, you remain ahead of the curve by being rebellious in spirit against the flimsy ideals of humanity. Not in a misanthropic way, but in a skeptical way. Your rebellion is vigilant, circumspect, and fierce. You embrace the hypocritical nature of the human condition as a given, careful to never rest upon any laurels or certitude. You rebel so that things do not become stuck. You rebel so that unhealthy stagnation doesn't become the norm. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Two, you are contrarian in thought. Socrates said. The only thing I know is, that I know nothing. You understand that the human mind is more of a delusion generator than a truth generator. From this understanding, you use the counterintuitive strategy of contrarian thinking. You are all about turning the tables on established thought. You flip the script, so that no single script ever becomes scripture. You blindside established logic and reasoning, so that new logic and reasoning can emerge. You do this, because you understand the weakness of human nature. You understand how easy it is to become married to an idea, theory, or belief, and to fortify them with thick walls of overthinking. But, as Saint Augustine said, we are too weak to discover the truth by reason alone. You understand that truth will always be elusive. Rather than attempt to pigeonhole it, or tame it, or force it into outdated scripture and tradition, or build it up into a rigid fundamentalism, you allow it to be free. You are in opposition to any idea, theory, belief, or ideal that claims to know the truth. For you understand, that the truth, that can be named, is not the truth. The Tao that can be told, is not the eternal Tao. Your contrarian nature keeps you ahead of the curve. It keeps you on the edge of discovery, and always on the verge of phenomenal experience. You are not contrary, for the sake of being contrary, rather, you are contrary, for the sake of allowing truth to remain free from the shackles of human delusion. 3. You challenge existing governments. Nietzsche said. All things are subject to interpretation. Whichever interpretation prevails at any given time, is a function of power, and not truth. You realize that power tends to corrupt. So, rather than allow power to become absolute, you choose to challenge it every chance you get. This may mean dissidence or even revolution. But, as Frederick Douglass said, those who profess to favor freedom, and yet deprecate agitation, are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. As an iconoclast, you are all about plowing up the ground. Especially beneath the throne of entrenched power constructs, and authoritarian governments verging on tyranny. 
you are willing to become a martyr if need be. For freedom is more of a proactive meditation on liberty than it is a passive imitation of law and order. You understand that freedom is never a given. It must be earned. It must be a flexible dance between liberty and justice. The moment freedom is taken for granted is the moment it is lost. As an iconoclast, you are adamant about maintaining the complicated balance between liberty and justice by always questioning authority. Four, you turn the tables on the status quo. A. Bartlett Yamadi writes, do not become one of those who only has the courage of other people's convictions. Nothing irks you more than hearing someone say, it's just the way things are, who am I to change it? They unwittingly limit themselves to the status quo. The status quo is the blind yet comfortable, ignorant yet blissful codependent majority going through the banal motions of a boring 9 to 5. Daily grind lifestyle based on fear, security, and safety. You turn the tables on the status quo by persistently taking a leap of courage out of comfortable codependence and into adventurous independence to discover interdependent providence. Then you lead by example, by becoming a beacon of darkness despite the blinding light of the status quo. The blinding light is the warm yet suffocating, safe yet fearful, secure yet limiting, codependent state. You have the audacity to let your shadow shine like black gold, revealing the courage it takes to become a self-improving, self-empowered, self-overcoming force of nature. From your bird's eye view position as a force of nature, you are able to see the bigger picture. You see how everything is connected to everything else. You see how the codependent majority, the status quo, doesn't know what's happening, and it doesn't even know that it doesn't know, Chomsky. Which is all the more reason to shine your darkness, or uncomfortable knowledge, into the blinding light of their all too comfortable ignorance. 5. You replace blind belief with open-minded thought. Ludwig Wittgenstein said, Philosophy is a battleground against the bewitchment of our intelligence by means of language, as an iconoclast, you are the tip of the spear in the battle against bewitchment of intelligence. You go so far as not to believe anything. That way, you are free to embrace truth, however elusive. You understand that belief itself is a hang-up. Better to simply think your way through a concept rather than believe it. In the battle against bewitchment, all beliefs, no matter how powerful or well-intended, are a hindrance to clear thought and self-improvement. Better to think rather than believe. Thinking that something might be true allows for error, fallibility, and wrongness. Believing that something is certainly true cuts us off from all other possibilities. Belief is all or nothing, predicated upon faith despite facts or evidence. Thought is open-ended, taking beliefs, facts, and evidence into deep consideration, and then using probability and validity to discover the truth. More importantly, thinking rather than believing allows for skepticism and questioning it is considered blasphemous to question a belief. Whereas questioning a thought is considered appropriate, might as well just skip belief altogether and simply take things into thoughtful consideration. As an iconoclast, you don't believe what you think, you question what you think. For you realize that the cure for certainty is curiosity. 6. You tend to make your own rules as an exile, outcast, or outlaw. Eliezer Yudkowsky said, you are personally responsible for becoming more ethical than the society you grew up in. You are bigger than the law, because you are proactively attempting to become more ethical than the society you grew up in. Some might call it functional anarchy, but you simply call it, being free from masters. As an outlaw, you have great respect for natural laws, but not man-made laws. This is because you understand, that humans are fundamentally flawed, fallible, and imperfect. As Edward Abbey wisely surmised, since few men are wise enough to rule themselves, even fewer are wise enough to rule others. At the end of the day, you are an iconoclast because you realize that we must sow a little revolution if we are to reap a little evolution. You are determined to plant your heels deep into the ground, to lay your shield low, and to declare to the powers that be, as Henry David Thoreau did. I was not designed to be forced. I will breathe after my own fashion. Let us see who is the strongest. 
Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.